If you have a dream, you, you know, it is possible. You can do it. You just, you have to work hard. You have to not quit. You have to, you know, go for your passion. Hi everyone, it's Alyssa Gonzalez, back with another episode of Songwriter Saturday. Today I chatted with Jen DeSilvio. She's a Grammy-nominated producer, an instrumentalist, and songwriter. In this episode, we talk about her journey, capturing magic moments during writing sessions, inspiring the next generation of women in the music industry, and some of her collaborations with Andrew Day and more. Here's our chat. Welcome to Songwriter Saturday. We're really excited to have you here. Thank you. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I know that you um, started working in finance, and I'm just curious yeah. how you made the jump from finance to songwriter and producer. I know it's crazy, right? I worked for Deloitte for two and a half years, and uh, I was sad so <laughs> because because I, I wanted to do music, but like I didn't know anybody. I just remember like reading Deepak Chopra and circling the hole one day and just going, I need to quit. And, and, uh, I did. And long story short, I made my way to LA and been writing and producing ever since. Yeah, that's awesome. So how did you like, like... did you hear that? Does he have a songwriting story as well? <laughs> He's never made that noise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep my adult voice present right now. Everything breaks down as soon as a dog enters the picture. Um, when you got out to LA, how did you make? You know, you worked with uh, Andrew Day, and with Rise Up, and I'm curious how that came about. How you started writing out there? How did you make those connections? A friend of mine, who at the time was. I think the head of A&R at BMG. We did a deal and he introduced me to Andrew Gold, who is one of the A&Rs at BMG. And I, Andrew was Andrew said to me, I have this artist, uh, I want you to work with her. He pulls up this cover of Muse she did. So I didn't really know what I was getting into. I just saw this girl, this crazy voice singing Muse and I love rock music. So for me, I was like, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna make a rock song, whatever. She comes over and we wrote it in like 15 minutes. It's so simple, you know, the chords, it's four chords repeating over and over, beautiful lyrics, big melodies. Her voice though is really the thing, I think that without Andrew, I don't think the song would have done what it did. I, 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 there, it's a certain caliber of an artist who can deliver that. You started being a pianist and a songwriter, and then you got into producing. When you're writing, are you thinking about the producing? When you're producing, are you thinking about the writing? It's hard as a, as a woman to be a producer, but um, I definitely don't think that I was viewed as a producer in around then. And I'd always been a writer. And then I started producing more records. I produced Beth, I produced Anne Marie, I produced whatever, all these different records. And all of a sudden, I get I have sessions now and people go, Oh, you write too? And I'm like, uh yeah. What? So the thing that I think is interesting is that and maybe maybe this is just my opinion, but a producer can't be a songwriter. If you if you go into a room with a producer, you're not expecting the producer to write lyrics and sing melodies. If you go in a room with a songwriter, you're not expecting them to produce it and engineer. And I think, I, f I think a lot of the best work I do is when I have a one-on-one -on -one session with an artist because I am in control of everything, like going with the flow in two seconds, engineering, producing, only writing, like whatever. Production's always happening in my brain, but if we don't get a song, yeah then there's nothing to produce. But sometimes the production can um, get you there too, you know? Like sometimes you're like, I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna say here. I'm just gonna put in a sick drum loop for a second. Oh, yep, heard it, you know? I do that a lot when I'm stuck. Cause like sometimes you just hear the same melody over and over if uh, on chords or whatever, on, on piano or guitar. So I'll like trick myself a bit, inspire myself. 
it's really important to have women in production and like behind the cameras. Do you feel that way in the music industry as well? I think it's really important because there is like a lack of women, you know, as in, as executives, as A&Rs, as producers, engineers. I think it's super, super awesome to support each other, to lift each other up, to be an ear when we need uh, advice and opinion, support. Side story, uh, I made Christina Perry's next record. Executive produced it. And Christina was like, can you come to New Jersey? So I went. She has this daughter. Her name's Carmela. If you go to my Instagram, there's this little thing of Carmela holding the Barbie producer doll. And Christina, Christina's like, what are you doing? And she goes, look, Mommy, it's Jen. Look, Mom, it's Jen. And I just thought, holy cow. Like, she's three. And she thinks she can do this because she saw me doing this. And like, I've always like really, I didn't even like know it at the time because you're so in it, like when you're working, producing, but um, she would have all these like photos that Christina took of Carmela just like watching me produce. I mean, it's crazy. And she's so much, I mean, I would like to think she's so much more of like a, she could do whatever she wants, badass. If she wants to do music, obviously her mom's a famous singer, but like I'm a songwriter, but if she wants to produce, she could do it and it's totally possible. Super important to empower our young kids. If they can see it, they can be it. 100%. It's so important to empower, and I think that's why in the music community, I mean, in any field, if you're an astronaut, like, we have to lift each other up. We have to be, you have to su support people and get, like, say, you know, if you have a dream, you, you know, it is possible. You can do it. Speaking of really cool women, um, you've worked with Miley Cyrus. I'd love to hear about that experience and when you guys created High together. That's really cool. Um, what did that session kind of look like? Was there a session? What was that experience like? Caitlin Smith and I wrote the song. My publisher, Brad at Cobalt, sent it to Keith Naftali, who sent it to Peter Edge, who sent it to Mark Bronson, who sent it to Miley. And then Miley was like, this is sick. And then Mark produced it and Miley changed some stuff in it and it became high, like straight up. I've never, like, if I were to tell you how many times, which is why I only ever write with artists, um, like with them directly, because I feel like that's where I'm gonna get like the good stuff. Kate, Caitlin is an artist in, in her own right. The genesis of a song into the spider web of the music business out back to the pure artists, like so Mark sending it to Miley, her really connecting to it, then changing some lyrics, making it her own, putting it out and it's perfect. It's like, it couldn't be more of like a perfect story. Like that never happens, never. You've written and produced for so many artists like Ben Platt, Demi Lovato, Miley Cyrus. How do you write across so many different genres Like when you go into these sessions? I personally think that I step into people's worlds. I feel like with records that I've done with artists like Heinz, Porridge Radio, and Cherry Glazer, it's like I'm jumping into their world. Bat for Lashes, jumping into her world. Anne Marie, Fletcher, jumping into their world. And it's very important for me to understand what it is that, or like the landscape of what it is. At the end of the day, a great song is a great song. It can be painted, you know, with any production. If I'm producing, I'm pretty cognizant of like who they are, where they wanna go, how I can help them elevate um, or change or find a new direction or whatever it is. But I think the thing we love the most about artists is who they are. So like, I don't wanna change it too much. What would be your biggest piece of advice for yourself when entering the music industry? I probably would have said, this is not, this is more like particularly to me, I would just say start producing earlier. Um, I feel like that is important um, if you are a producer. Don't sweat the small stuff, like the business of it. Like the reason music exists is because it comes from a place that I think is really pure and I think sometimes the business can get people down and I wish I could have been like a bit more confident. You know, I'm working with an artist because I think they're dope. 
because I think they are the best thing since sliced bread. And I believe in them and I, and I feel honored to be a part of their process. And somewhere along the way, all these voices come into everyone's head, into these artists' head, and they second guess their artistry. You know, f with yourself, still f with yourself. Like, don't, 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 you know, don't be led astray by the wrong things. Or, you know, always like lead with your gut or keep it close. I think a lot along the way, I kind of lost that a little bit because um, my feet weren't on the ground, but now I'm, I don't really care. <laughs> um, so I guess, I guess it would just be to like believe in yourself and not lose that. Well, thanks so much for coming on Songwriter Saturday, Jen. This was great. Thanks for having me, Alyssa. I had a great time. If you ever want to do it again, give me a call. Yeah, this was so much fun. This was awesome. Biggie's around too. Bye, Biggie. Say bye.